Okay, we're gonna change the radiator out. 2012 Nissan Altima four cylinder. Uh, I've already taken the old radiator out and put the new one in, but I'm gonna go back through a couple of the steps just so um, makes it a little bit more clear on how to do this. Uh, so what I did is I put the car up in the air because I got about three inches of ground clearance and I can't really get under the car that way. Uh, once the car's up, take out your battery. We'll disconnect your battery. I took it out just easier to get to some of that stuff. Uh, front bumper comes off. The plastic bumper off. There's like a bolt up in here, a couple of screws down here. Same thing over there, and then you got a couple of those little tab, push tabs that go in there. Uh, once the bumper's off, next thing you'll do is uh, take this part of the frame off, or the this is a little frame piece right there. There's just two bolts here, and then a couple more of those push plastic push pins, and then a bolt right there. So I took that off. I got stuff wired to it, so I just had to let it kind of hang right there. Um, then what you can do uh, at this point, uh, you're going to have to deal with your condenser unless you can find a way to hang it there so you can take the radiator out. But since I didn't have any R134 left in this system anyway because of an earlier leak, I didn't have to worry about it. Just unbolted it here. Um, this guy right here and in there like that just took that bolt out just remember if you have r134 in there and you take this bolt out it's gonna spray and you're gonna lose all your um, all your refrigerant that way uh, I also removed this bolt back here so that I could take the whole thing out so that it's not blocking it's not sitting in front of there getting in your way uh, once that's done uh, if you have no more uh, 134 in there and then you're good to go you just unplug this your high pressure switch then I haven't set it back inside of these tabs because it's kind of a pain in the butt to do with one hand but you have to push these tabs back here and here and you can slide the whole thing out that's in there and right there once you do that you should be able to slide it all the way up so you'll slide the whole thing up like that and then the whole condenser comes out you know take it and put it somewhere where it's not going to get damaged so there's the condenser that's a oil transmission oil cooler but that's for another day uh, once that's done now you've got just your radiator so you have to drain it so looking at the passenger side of the car all the way down here and up underneath right there that cross tip screw right there take that plug out or take that screw out and it's going to drain out about 90 percent of the fluid that's in your radiator so make sure you have a place to catch it just take that bolt out catch all that crap uh, then you put your plug back in then you're going to come over here to the other side of the vehicle where you're going to go this is the new plug still in the new one but it's where your lower radiator hose would be. So you would clamp, pull the clamp back and then slowly work the, the hose back, but keep a something under it to catch it because you're gonna get more fluid out of here. Once that's out, you're gonna have a hose coming in here. This is your transmission cooler line. One here, one, let's see, it. freaking camera's trying to focus on the wrong crap. There's one up top too, I can show you that one better from up top, but. You're going to pull that hose off of there, comes off of your transmission, comes off of here. Pull that hose out, you're going to get a little bit of transmission fluid, but not a lot. Uh, once that one's out, your bottom radiator hose is off. What I did is I took both of those hoses and pulled them up top here. This is a transmission cooler line. It's your lower radiator hose. It's going to keep anything else that might want to run back out of there from well, running out of there. Uh, then in here where your battery is, I took the battery out. Uh, right there, that's the upper transmission cooler line. 
So once you got all those lines unplugged, two transmission lines, lower radiator hose, you can come over here and disconnect your upper radiator hose. Uh, this little collar here, I disconnected it there first. Just made it a little easier to work with and get that out of the way. Then you can disconnect this hose, which runs from the bottom of there through the frame and into the uh, radiator. So once that's removed, radiator is pretty much drained. You're going to come over here and take these clips off. Uh, all you have to do is pry out on either side of that. I can do it with one hand. Like that. And the whole thing comes forward. You got one on each side. So these can come. You can take these right off of here. Set them aside somewhere. This one here. Set it aside somewhere. So now you should be able to access the other end of your upper radiator hose. So you can take that thing off so you can get it through the firewall. At this point, it's all just a matter of picking it up. Pulling it right out. And there's your radiator. So this is the new one. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back in and start hooking everything up to it. So I slid it back into place basically the same way you took it out. Um, it's got these little pegs down at the bottom. They're just going to slide right back into those little rubber grommets right there. Well, it says to slide right in there. And everything should sit in there nice. And put these back on now. And take these, they'll even tell you which way is up. You just set it on there. Take the other one, set it on there. Make sure you line it up. Push, shear, click. Right here, here, click. Radiator's in. Uh, one thing I forgot to do, I'm gonna have to go back and do it, is put the upper radiator hose on now. So I'm gonna disconnect this so I can get to it again and pull this one too I can lean everything forward take that off so now I can get in there I can put the upper radiator hose back through here and I can actually get some vice grips on it or whatever get a hold of that clamp so that I can work the thing back on so I'm gonna do that first and then attach it um, Real quick though, this is the old radiator that came out. Um, if you're looking at it, say like if you were the engine looking at the radiator, the best way I can describe it. So you have a radiator hose, lower radiator hole, transmission, transmission. That's all that's gonna have to be disconnected when you go to pull this radiator out. That's all the fluid hoses that need to be pulled. There is no oil cooler, just a transmission cooler on that side. Alright, upper radiator hose is on. Make sure this clamp's facing up though, because if it's facing that way, you're going to hit right there, you won't be able to get the radiator to fall all the way into place. So, we're going to put the rubber grommets back on top, and go ahead and snap it back into place. And then probably do the condenser, go ahead and mount the condenser, and start connecting these hoses back here as well. All right, so the condenser's back in. It just falls right into those little clips right there, right there. Little clip right there, and right there. And you plug back in your high pressure switch. I went ahead and put this hose back in place. Uh, I changed the rubber gasket so you can get like a thing of, um, Replacement gaskets for your AC. Matter of fact, that's it right here. Just replacement gaskets. It's like 10 bucks. So, whenever you do this, it's always a good idea to change those gaskets. Um, so, put that one back in. Then, uh, so we can get a shot of that one right there. Put that one back in. So, now I should be able to refill my AC. But uh, anyway, upper hose is back on, upper hose is connected. The, uh, let's see. Light. 
uh, transmission cooler line right there. That's the upper lower is connected. You can see it way down there along with the lower radiator hose. Come back out, go under the car, take a look. So, radiator hose connected. Radiator hose, and then up above it is the. So we can get in here and take a look at it. So there's the radiator hose. There's the transmission cooler line. Radiator hose. So all that's plugged back in. So we should be able to fill up the radiator and not dump fluid all over Hill's creation right there. All right, so I I took about a gallon and a quarter of coolant out of this thing. Put about a gallon in, cranked it up, let it run. Uh, so, because this is a this is a non-pressurized system, so you don't have to burp the system. It's it's going to do it on its own. So, and you can see how it's bubbling a little bit right now. But what you want to do is turn the car on, let it run long enough to where your fans come on. Once your fans come on, your thermostat's open, it's cycling coolant. So, just kept filling it up, fill it up. You'll see it sit hot, it'll sit up at the top and then all of a sudden it'll drain down in there. Then you pour a little bit more in, you wait till it sits about where it's sitting right now. And you're pretty good. You might get another couple of burps out of it, but that's about good right there. Um, just keep an eye on your temperature gauge if it seems to be running a little bit hotter than it normally does. Uh, just check your coolant, make sure that you know you're not dry. That your overflow tank is should be purge tank should be empty. It should be sitting like that. If not, it's going to push fluid back into your uh, surge tank. But right now it seems to be good. So I'm going to drive it around a little bit and make sure the temperature stays the same. But that's about it for. Uh, changing the radiator on this thing uh, yeah just putting the bumper back on and everything else now that's all that's pretty much it's left um, also charged the AC because all the fluid had leaked out uh, prior so I came back down here and I disconnected here and back here right there but I bought a little gasket kit right put new gaskets in there bought this stuff right here it was about forty dollars but uh it's pretty good stuff take it plug it into your low side and you can tell it's the low side because it's going to have a big l right there on the cap so make sure your car's running air conditioner's blowing you know full blast cold as it'll go You want to connect your uh, connect this hose here to your low side, and then it's going to give you a temperature all the way down. There you go. Now it's all the way down, and right now it's holding pressure right there. So you just pull the trigger; it's going to fill it, release the trigger, and just watch that gauge. If it starts creeping down like this. You've got a leak in your system somewhere and you need to figure out where that leak is and fix it. A lot of times it's those little gaskets inside there, they, you know, they rot, they get rotted out and they're, they're no good. But right now it seems to be holding pressure. It's on the low side. Usually it's going to be the, the fatter of the two hoses. There's the high side, there's the low side. But uh, once you get it in there, let it sit for, you know, a couple of minutes. While your AC is running, just watch that gauge. Make sure that thing isn't moving. If it ain't moving, you're good to go. You can disconnect that. Put your uh, cap back on it. Remember, it's going to have an L on it for low side right there. Put that cap back on there. Good to go. Take a look at our coolant. Still sitting high up there. It's good to go. We can put the radiator cap back on. Take this bad boy for a spin. Make sure we did everything right. Make sure we're not leaking anything right now.
is a good time to check it because you're in kind of a controlled environment but you ain't got no uh, leaks all over the floor that was from earlier but nothing seems to be leaking everything seems to be good the biggest problem is going to be right there your lower radiator hose but it seems to be good and that's about it changing the radiator this is the information on the radiator part number uh, I bought it at AutoZone AutoZone uses that number A2988 but that's it right there uh, it's Spectra Premium it comes with a lifetime warranty uh, everything fits in real good I put it in the car I've had no issue uh, installation is pretty easy but that's it right there